Yeah. 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 Too funny. This week we finally finished our climb up the up the pass past the uh, Song Pond to the Tibetan grasslands. Woohoo! And yeah, it took forever. What a what a long, grueling climb. Not that much fun, but at least the views were nice. Yeah. Mm. Fresh baked sugary bread for breakfast. Cannot get any better than that. The time has come. We put it off as long as we can. It's time to do the final push to the top of this ridiculous five day climb that we've been doing. Uh, Can't wait to be done. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Today we've got a, about a thousand meters up, I think. Uh, yeah, a thousand we're, more meters from where we are. Yeah, we're currently in Song Pan at 2850 and we're going to head up to, I think, 3800. Yeah, about 3850. Yeah, so should be a long day of climbing, but this is our last one. So it's All pretty right. exciting. Let's <laughs> do it. Too funny. Altitude 3,500 meters. We've officially gone 3,000 meters up from Chengdu. All right, we made it to the top. After five days of nothing but uphill, we finally get a little bit of fall sweat downhill. They kind of torn up the road a little bit, but I don't even care. We're done going uphill for a little bit. That's amazing. Oh, hey. Good job. Yeah. Yuck, yuck, yuck. We're in Tibetan nomad land now. Starting to see lots of tents and lots of yaks. So cool. Yeah. But you get to the top and there is absolutely nothing there. You no. got a hundred miles, 160 kilometers over the top of the climb before you get to a town. Yeah. And so we rode 30 or 40 kilometers past the top of the climb to where we ended ended up staying for the night at a restaurant. Yeah. We just we stopped for lunch and then said, "All right, we're done." Well, it was the closest town if you could call it a town. It was kind of like a collection of tents. And there were like two real buildings. One of them was the restaurant that we ate lunch at and the other one was like a shop next door. And so we ended up just asking the restaurant owners if we could camp behind their restaurant because they had like a backyard with a fence to keep all the yaks and animals and stuff out. And he said yes. And of course, we set up our tent and everything and afterwards, a lady comes by and tells us we need to pay 50 kwai. So that wasn't so nice because we thought that they were just being nice and letting us pitch our tent for free, but apparently not. Yeah, Tibetans aren't that nice. No. Yeah, they, they get a great rap in the Western media, but they're really not that nice people. No, <laughs> um, not so much. What was really funny though, is we were cooking dinner that night, oh my God. <laughs> fry, frying up our pork and the uh, guy comes out to give us some water and he's appalled. Oh my why, God, the look would, on his face why was Why would you cook pork? He's Muslim. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. Like, well, also I didn't know because obviously in every religion there's different degrees. Like, different people have different degrees of uh, what would you call it? 
like following the religion, like how strict they are with their religious beliefs. And so I could tell that he was Muslim just based on their he restaurant. Had the cool hat. And like the little hat that he was wearing. But I didn't know if he, how strict he was about it. And if that, I didn't think that he would care that we were cooking pork, which was the only meat that we had with us to eat in our own pots and our, using our own bowls and our own utensils and everything. But yeah, the look on his face was priceless. He was appalled and he didn't even want to come like any, Justin was cooking the pork and he didn't want to come anywhere near Justin to give us water. So I had to go out and hold the bag for him. Little did he know, but I cut up the raw meat, but shh, don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> towns we went to up here were wonderful. They were yeah, nice they were really and relaxing. Cool. The people were nice enough at the hotels. They weren't yeah. they weren't expensive. Mm -mm. And they had nice uh, Buddhist monasteries at them that we can go walk around and enjoy. They're really, I mean not really fancy, but they have like gold plated roofs or gold painted uh, roofs. Yeah, it's uh, stamped sheet metal that's plated in some kind of fake gold. We saw a deer. Yeah, in Roargai, I think it was. We saw our very first wild Chinese deer, and I classify it by saying wild because I've seen deer in zoos in China. It mi <laughs> might have been wild. It might have been one of the Buddhist guy's pets. It was a little I fun. I don't think so. It was a little fun, but it was pretty skittish. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to assume it was a wild deer, but right. it was so cute. And the next day we hung out with the sheeps up on the hill above the monastery. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was very nice and relaxing out there. Yeah.
nomads are all out working with their horses. All the yaks are grazing. It's so nice. but kind of cool. really pretty the monasteries are always like right above the town so when you walk up to them you can actually walk up behind them and then you get like a view over the monastery and the town and the surrounding grasslands and it's really really pretty luckily we had about two hours of sunshine every day the rest of the time it was cloudy and it always happened to be in the afternoon after we arrived to town so we always went up on the hill and just kind of chilled and relaxed and enjoyed the view and walked around the monasteries for a little while. Yeah. It was really nice. 